Hey everyone, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch and uh, today I wanted to talk to you about um, expanding on this idea of parallelism using message passing instead of shared memory uh, with MPI. And you know, last video we saw that we had this problem when we just tried to print out using MPI with multiple different uh, multiple different ranks because they were still accessing C out, which as we mentioned previously, is not thread safe. And because it's not thread safe, we can get interleaved results. So we can do a lot better than this. So let's go ahead and open up our example. So let's open up MPI hello uh, synchronize.cpp. Uh, and let's see uh, what's going on here. So just like last time, we'll have the same setup where uh, you know we'll go ahead and get uh, the specific rank uh, of the process. We'll get the uh, size of the communicator. So how many ranks are within a specific communicator, that communicator being MPI com world, which is our default communicator. And then we'll also get the processor name, which like we said last time happens to be uh, the username uh, or my specific username. So it'll be CBA uh, in our case. So then we'll do something different, right? So in order to synchronize, because these things are in different processes, you know, we don't really have access to something like a mutex lock. Mutex locks make sense when we have multiple different uh, processes that have, uh, uh, it doesn't make as much sense with message passing because we'll have multiple different processes and multiple different processes, um, you know, we don't have the same memory space. So, you know, passing the address of say a lock it doesn't make sense because that address isn't valid inside of another process. So what we'll do instead is we'll designate one of our ranks to be the person that prints out all of the uh, uh, prints out all the messages. So prints out this hello MPI, the rank number, uh, the total number of uh, rank uh, processes within a specific commun the communicator, and then also what uh, machine that is being run on. So uh, we can simply do it like this. So remember every single uh, MPI uh, or every single uh, of the processes or every single one of the ranks is running the same application. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and say, let's just make rank zero the one that's going to uh, be the only one that prints. So what we'll have to do, because these aren't in uh, a shared memory space, we'll have to use some uh, communication, right? So we'll have to find a way to get the string from one process to another process. And we can use that through the send and receives. So what we'll do is we'll send messages. If we are not rank zero, we'll send our string that we created up here uh, in this buffer. And we'll just send it using uh, MPI send, which takes first, it'll take uh, a pointer to the uh, data we're going to send. It'll take the length of that data. Then it will take a uh, a data type, so this will be an MPI data type. So it'll take MPI char in this case because we're sending characters. Which rank we want to send it to? So in this case, everyone's sending to rank zero. Then uh, we have to tag our message, right? So um, when we're sending uh, when we're sending a message, uh, we can give it a, a unique tag if we want to. So we could have you know, maybe the rank zero is waiting for a specific tag. Maybe, you know, tag, you know, 28 means something different than 27. And maybe we, we need to make sure we read something that's tag 27 before we read tag 28. So we can specify a tag for a message. Um, and then of course we have to, we'll give the uh, communicator, right? So the communicator is going to be MPI com world um, because that's what every, all these ranks belong to. Uh, okay, so then let's let's look at what rank zero does. So uh, rank zero, it'll first just print out whatever its uh, whatever its buffer is, because it's um, you know it doesn't have to send a message to itself. So it'll just print out uh, the buffer, and then what it will do for um, all the next ranks. So from rank i equals one to uh, and then it'll loop over while i is less than size. So uh, the size comes from up here, this MPI com size, which says, uh, which you know gets the value of how many ranks are within the communicator. So just as a quick reminder. So then what we do is we call MPI receive. And so MPI receive receives messages. So just because we send a message doesn't mean the uh, other rank has received the message. So we need to explicitly call receive as well. 
So there's a, a little more complexity here compared to shared memory implementations. Shared memory implementations, we just did loads and stores, right? So we just, you know, we stored something to an address that's a pointer or we read something from a pointer, right? We didn't have to explicitly send and receive. So in this case, though, because it's message passing, we have to explicitly do this. So we'll call MPI receive. And what we'll do is it will have to specify where we're going to put the data. So we'll put it in buffer. We'll just overwrite what's ever in this buffer uh, because we've already printed it out right here. And then we'll take, uh, we'll say we want to read, you know, max 150. And then of that data type, which is going to be MPI char, so characters. And then we get um, two things right here. So we have to specify what rank are we getting this uh, from? So we can specify, I'm going to wait until I receive a message from rank two, rank four, rank one. Uh, and then I can also say, I'm going to wait until I get a message from rank I that has been tagged I. Okay, and then uh, again, we need to specify the communicator. And then there's also a status, which we can just ignore uh, in this simple example. So in this case, what we'll do or what this kind of uh, uh, what this means for execution is that we'll start looping at i equals one, which means that the source and the tag must must both must both be one. So other messages can come in during this time. Say if rank one hasn't sent its message yet, but all of those will just get queued up. They'll all get buffered, and MPI receive will just wait until we get um, something from rank one with tag one. Right, so what the what the overall uh, what overall will happen here is we'll get a serialized output that will print out rank zero, rank one, rank two, rank three, all the way to rank n, uh, or rank n minus one rather, uh, because uh, we're specifically waiting for the ranks in order here. That's what we uh, that's what we're doing right here when we're saying we have to receive something from rank one first, then the loop goes again, then rank two, rank three, etc. And then of course, at the very end, we just call MPI finalize. All right, so let's go ahead and see how this works in reality. So let's call MPI C++ again, dash O, MPI hello, synchronize .cpp. Okay, so now it's compiled and then we run it with multiple processes using MPI run and then dash NP for the number of processes. Let's do, let's do eight processes this time. Okay, and then dot slash MPI hello synchronize. All right, so now we see that um, we're launching eight total processes that um, the, each of them uh, will have their own rank of eight. And then we see that we're printing them in order now, and it will always print in order. So we fixed our inner leaving problem. Uh, but at some kind of a cost, right? Because now we're caring about these buffered messages. So now we're, you know, if someone else sends a message early, then it's just it just has to, uh, you know, sit around. But we don't necessarily have to wait for a specific rank to send a message. So there's some built-in variables we can use to fix that. And we also don't have to wait for a specific tag. So if we don't care about which rank that we're getting uh, our data from, we can just call MPI uh, any source. And this says that any rank can send a message uh, or I'll wait for any ranks message. And then I can also change this to MPI any tag. And this says, okay, not only can this uh, message be from any, uh, not only can this message be from any other rank, that message can have any tag. So if I don't care about the rank and I don't care about the tag, which for something as simple as this, I really don't care about either of those two things. I really just wanna make sure I don't get interleaved printing. That's what I can do. And so then we don't have this buffering problem. So let's go ahead and compile this again. And let's run it again. So now we see we get a little bit of a, a mix up here. So instead of being 0 through 7. Now we get 0, 1, 2, 4, 7, 3, 6, 5. And if we keep running it, uh, sometimes we'll get, you know, the exact uh, order from 0 to 7. 
but it's not guaranteed. But we are avoiding any kind of buffering, right? We're not buffering everything together, uh, or we're not buffering everything and doing things sequentially. Uh, it can be in any arbitrary order, but they'll never interleave because we're making sure that every single message is going to get serialized through rank zero in this case. So that's going to be this example of you know how we do some basic synchronization with MPI. As always, we can always look at, uh, let's move this out of the way. We can always look at uh, the GitHub page uh, for this, uh, for my channel called uh, github.com slash coffee before arch. It's where I host all the code for these things. So feel free to go here, check out my stuff on MIPS assembly programming, uh, Python 3, C++, or even GPU programming with CUDA. So we looked at practical parallelism in C++. I have my emails if you have any comments or anything that you would like uh, to maybe have a video on or anything you're confused about, feel free to message me. And then of course, links to all the other videos that I have as well as the files associated with those videos. So we looked at MPI, MPI hello synchronized.cpp. So feel free to check this out, download it, play around with it, and you know, let me know if you have any questions or you know what kind of what kind of examples that you'd like to see next. But as always, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and I hope you have a nice day.